Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning with me, Rekaton. Let's track down this Harst fellow for the War Sworn. Pull back. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, where is it? There it is. Nope, don't want to exit. I want to go down here to junk and get rid of that stuff. There we go. Nice. Hammer out. This guy's a valuable lesson. You don't bring a spear to a hammer fight. Though I still do regret that you can't use spears in this game. Like some of the attack animations, I, don't know, I feel like it fit the character very well. I mean, it can't, it can't be that hard to add to the game, or add to the, you know, to unlock for the player, or give, let the player use it, but the, I don't know, because the animations and everything are already there for the NPCs. Very heroic, my fine little war swan. You say so. All right, time out. There we go. Oh, sweet. Then I have a uh, battle frenzy up for this fight. Fought your way to my very door, but the vault has been emptied and Lord Beeson has flown, flown to Eamon's Isle. Now, Eamon's Isle. You don't even know, do you? Your own history. Well, let it stay buried. Okay. Uh, who is Beeson? So I know where the artifacts are, because they're with Beeson. Under Lord Beeson, the Farlangi shall bring a beauty, terrible and sublime, into the world. Now! Okay, wasn't able to interrupt that. Let's, um... Try this again. Alright, mages first. All right, calm down, everybody. All right, definitely block that. That's fine. All 
All right, I'm gonna execute these guys, and then we'll take him out separately. A little disappointed I couldn't get it all, but that glyph on the ground was slowing down my attacks. And I was getting hit by ice, which didn't help. Come on, this guy's messed me up. I just went right through him. Cool. That's fine. I could get off all three attacks there. I could get off two attacks there as well. There we go. This guy has a ton of health. And he hits hard. This guy's scary. I remember last time that I had a fight that difficult. That guy was scary. I'm glad that I executed when I did, because I don't think even with uh, Reckoning mode, I'd be able to take him out before it expired. Oh, what? I did not see that trap on the ground at all. Also, can I interact with this giant cauldron? No. Come on, there we go. Ah. Alright, so that quest is going to take me where now? Meet Gwyn and the Keys. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Right, we're going to talk to her real fast. Am I cursed? What is that? Yep. Beeson, the Beeson. If it's true he's gone to Eamon's Isle, we must follow immediately. I know a ship's captain here in the city. Hopefully Captain Gomform isn't already hired. Take this, a token from Delfric himself. We should send word of our discoveries to him immediately. Uh, Gwyn's research. I wish my search has turned up half as much as yours. These mages call themselves Farlongi, but no one has ever heard of them. Half of those I spoke to hadn't heard of what happened at Brigand Hall, and they, if anyone, should have. They're supposed to watch for such things. Beeson has cloaked his actions well. Uh, Gwyn's mother. Any time she was not on duty, she spent among our histories and our ancient sites. I learned from her what the Warsworn were, and the things we lost. But she never found the secret she was looking for. The uh, Eamon's Isle. It was built in the time of the First Sworn. Known as Skarik artifacts are stored there, but if the accounts are true, much of our early wisdom was kept in the Stronghold's chapel. Uh, First Sworn. The founders of our order long ago. They amassed great knowledge about fighting Nisgaru. Nearly all lost and forgotten. A uh, Beeson. Some say he is a match for Calidus and that he sits on the Orbicant. Either way, he's a mage of considerable power. If he's behind all of this, then I fear this is only the beginning. Huh. The Forlongi. I have wandered about them since we last spoke. 
They take the name from the legendary mage Farlong, but I do not know why. Farlong. I know only his name as a foe <coughs> of Aegon, me. son of Eamon, and I know the histories well. Uh, we set sail at once. As soon as a ship can be chartered, yes. Search for Captain Gonthorm on the docks. If he has a ship free, I believe he will take us. You, bring word to Lord Delphic. <laughs> now. I please walk, don't run. It's not an emergency or anything. Alright, I'm actually going to go up top and take care of this other quest that we have. I think it's this one. Yeah. Do not miss Leogriff's many marvels. So this is the learning quest for the Scully Arcana that we had. Oh, goodness. Good evening. Greetings. Consult the texts. All right. Don't think that I need that. Oh well. Oh boy. All right, lesson one. Eleanor Brio was one of the founders of our order. Sorceress Brio was born some 800 years ago into a life of bondage. She is blind and low so far, far from Glen Sethane. As she suffered under the rule of the dictator Ciara Sedanus, yet she, like you, possessed a natural talent for magic. Eleanor Brio harnessed this gift uh, to not only escape slavery, but to ultimately free Aerithel of all Sidonis' rule. She did this through discipline, through a determined commitment to learning the ways of the arcane. Eleanor Bria represents hope to our students. The first lesson to learn from Eleanor is one for all of our order. Eleanor Brio is but one, one of the founders. Because she was the only one gifted with the use of magic, some consider her the true progenitor, or progenitor of the Scully Arcana. For were it not for her allies, she would never have succeeded. The other statues in the courtyard represent the other two founders of the Scully Arcana. Remember them well, for if it is your quest to become as great a sorceress Bria herself, you undoubtedly need the help of others. Uh, the second lesson to learn from Eleanor Bria is at the heart of magical study. Uh, Eleanor Bria was among the first sorceresses to, un to standardize the use... <sighs> so much to read. Sorry, I hit my desk too. To standardize the use of elements in her spellcasting. Before her, magic was a mysterious and imperfect practice. Even the ancient Order of Ash, one of the oldest societies of magic users in all of Amalur, were as wild and ungoverned then as we are orderly and precise today. Eleanor Bria showed us a better way. She linked these elemental energies into a singular rubric. The three elements of fire, frost, and lightning were categorized, and the art of evocation finally realized. Were it not for her understanding, we would hardly be able to command magic as we do today. The third and final lesson to learn here is that of discipline. Eleanor Bria was not born a usurper. She had not become one of the most powerful mages in all the Feylands in the course of a day. It did not happen accidentally, but through years and years of intense practice. If it is your wish to become similarly proficient, you must devote yourself to learning as she did. This will require hours of reading each day. It will involve dangerous and sometimes terrifying experiences. It will test your will and patience as no other obstacle can. And should you be able to continue this regimen, you will undoubtedly become a great, as great as Eleanor Bria herself. Indeed, most applicants of the Scully Arcana cannot face their potential. Those that can rarely achieve it. Until now, none have been able to surpass their potential. But this may change with you. For the next part of this lesson, you must go to the Rithir Bridge. Stand there and contemplate the bridge. Whew. 
hopefully I'll have to read something that long every time we go to a new location for this quest. I've done enough reading out loud today. Also, I need to visit a healer. Before I forget to do so. Students of magic, masters of spells. All right. Let's read the tome again. Let's see, let's collapse that. <sighs> Lesson two. In the courtyard, you learn the first three principles of method, unity, harmony, and discipline. These three tenets are at the foundation of every student's education, as much as the bridge is at the foundation of her theater. The bridge is a legacy of permanence and dedication. Originally, the Alfar who settled the Twilly coast would take a skiff or rowboat to reach the Spire Rock. This was a treacherous voyage that ended with as many boats smashed upon the rocks as they were safely harbored. This bridge was built very early on in Rithir's construction through the combined effort of Dolkofar settlers. There are two lessons to be learned at the Rithir Bridge. The first is an extenuation of the principle of unity, for here you can bear witness to what is possible when you work with others. The Rithir Bridge is a symbol for the Dolkofar people, one of perseverance and loyalty. The grandeur of Rathir is visible from afar, but once on the bridge you can truly see its magnificence. The construction of Rathir took many people working together in difficult conditions, and they were able to build one of the most elegant and elaborate cities known to Alfar. This is why the lesson of the Rathir Bridge embodies the principle of proof. In all knowledge there is always proof of that knowledge. Look at the Rathir Bridge and witness proof of Eleanor Bria's unity. The second lesson is the principle of duality. This bridge is an exit and an entrance both to Rathir and to the Twilly Coast. You decide which, and in your decision, you illuminate the other aspect of this lesson, choice. Your studies at the Scalia Arcana will be exacting. Your teachers will be austere in their technique. At times you'll feel as if you have no autonomy to pursue your own interests. Uh, but this bridge represents that dichotom dichotomy. In one direction lies a historic city of knowledge, beauty, and, art and the arts. In the other direction lies the Twilly Coast a blood-soaked, war-torn battlefield that was once a stretch of idyllic farms and fishing villages. Now, both paths lead to exploring the greater world beyond the Rithier Gates. You are singular amongst our order, in that you have the ability to determine your own fate. Now, take full advantage of your unique freedom by recognizing duality in all things. When you're done meditating upon these lessons, proceed to the village of Meliglir and Candrian. I feel like I still have quests to do here. What quest is that? That might just be the task. Alright, I guess we're gonna leave and finish this quest. Let's go ahead and knock it out. Where's it at? Oh, this isn't too bad. All right. Lesson three. Meliglir sits at the heart of uh, Candrian, the land named after the family who has ruled for generations. The village is well defended from Tuatha raiders, bandits, and the wild fae that rim the plains of Arathel. There are many threats to Candrian, and the kings and lords who rule here must always be ready for conflict. The lesson to be learned in Meliglir is the principle of preparation. For centuries, Candrian Keep has been a bastion of strength for the Alfar people. The early kings of Candrian protected all of Arathel from the threats of Durek or uh, Jotun invasion. Candrian Keep was the only fortress to withstand Ciara Sidonis's might. In times of crisis, 
The kings of Kandrian would house the villagers within the walls of the keep. A Kandrian guard is, as well as a militia kept the peace throughout the villages and countryside. The people of Kandrian were always prepared, and thus able to survive. The survival of Meliglir is a testament to the importance of preparation. Whereas the previous lessons facilitate success in the Scully Arcana, this lesson will help you survive. Students of the Scully Arcana are frequently and woefully unprepared to deal with magic. It is a volatile and hazardous force, and there is no room for imprudent experimentation in our order. Those who do not heed this lesson are liable to suffer, and unwittingly cause others to harm. Cause others to harm. Okay. A Meliglir stands as a warning to any who would delve into the secrets of magic. Prepare appropriately or suffer the consequences. When you're ready, yeah, when you're ready, proceed to the Kandrian countryside. You do not want to pick a fight with me. I'm trying to fast travel. Y'all are interrupting my questing. I was just a Freeman armband. I'm not going to pick it up. I don't feel like dealing with that. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. The dude is right here. Well, he's actually over here. We'll turn it in later. I'm not gonna fret about it right this very second. Read the tome again. Why not? <sighs> final lesson. You arrived at the final lesson, forming the foundation of magical inquiry. Of everything that you will learn at the Scully Arcana, the most valuable lesson will be the principle of observation. The mastery of the elements, or the ability to invoke powerful sorcery, is useless without understanding of one's surroundings. An environment is a complex system of uh, interrelated attributes, and in order to function within one, you must be aware of the boundaries and rules of that system. Uh, many of our order become myopic, a closeted acad ac academicians. Academicians? Academicians. Well, I've ever used that word before. Too concerned with their own learning to apply it to the world. Other hap haphazardly uh, conduct their research in the hostile and unpredictable world. Both of these avenues end in a failure to face your potential, or to successfully achieve it. All of the previous principles are useless without observation. Learn to regard your surroundings in as many ways as possible. Explore and consider the people around you. Meliglir is an example of preparation, but is also a lesson in observation. The village has dwindled since the beginning of the war. The young were enlisted, and many others moved to safer locales. The once serene farmland of Candrian is now rife with bandits and monsters, because Lord Candrian hides in his keep like so many of our reclusive sages. Uh, similarly, the principle of duality inheres in observation. You have the freedom to control your fate, and your every decision is informed by your perception of your surroundings. Lord Kandrian refuses to fight the Tuatha, and he cannot make a wise judgment from behind stone walls. The battle you just face is a direct result of Lord Kandrian's poor understanding of the principle of duality, because of ignorance of the existing conditions. Observation is the main tool with which we discover proof. It requires discipline in order to be effective. You may not be the most dutiful student of the principle of observation. If you hadn't been prepared for that battle, you would have perished. In order to be prepared, you must first have immersed yourself into your surroundings and become aware of the dangers posed in this land. To conclude this examination, return to Savant Idris Theonin. Your future may lay outside of the pur purview of the Scully Arcana. However, you will benefit from adhering to the methods of our order when you are tested. Cool. All right, let's go to eight and turn in those two armbands real fast. Then we'll go back and talk to that 
librarian. <sighs> that was a lot of reading. East of Fortunes can be had there. Oh, really? Got a few for f keep the peace. All right, back here. We have a few quests we can run around and turn in. I have the next quest for the travelers. I have um, Durfel's labors. My students of magic, masters of spells. What else do I have? I feel like I have more quests than that to turn in. But first things first, we'll turn in this quest, then we'll it's worry about the rest. I kind of wish there was fast travel points within the city. Like, upper and lower would be nice, or just, um, fast travel to the Scully Arcana itself. Greetings. Oh, is it this guy? Excellent job. You've earned a Scolia Arcana stipend, if nothing else. Now, let's see what you've learned. What was the point of your final lesson? Observation. Principle of observation. Yes, that is correct. I see you have a promising future in our order. Well, it's a good thing he didn't ask me about the middle one. Or the first one. <laughs> Glad he asked Greetings. about the most recent one. Say, like, hey, what was that thing you just learned about? Fast travel. I can't fast travel from inside the. Well, that's goofy. Can I do it from in here? Yeah. All right, let's go talk to Durful. Greetings. Stop doing push-ups and talk to me. Ah, you have returned. Then your seventh labor awaits. Together, the items you collected comprise the Amrinthian Band, the crown of Candrian kings. Your seventh labor is to reconstruct this crown. The Amrinthian Band. It is an ancient crown for ancient kings. That is all I will say on the matter. Okay, and how do I reconstruct the band? There is only one place where the Amrinthian Band may be reconstructed. On a rock. Find a fey sagecrafter named Hendy and tell her I sent you. She will assist you in restoring the Amrinthian band. Farewell. Have I been there already? I feel like I've been there already. See, dwarves are in the game. Is this the one that's like right beneath this town? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's take care of this quest then. Welcome to to to, to Honor Rock, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Hendy. It's not often I get visitors here in Honor Rock. What is your business? Nanya, a uh, sage crafting. I can help you with your gems if you wish. Hendy. Nothing too interesting. Just a lonely sage crafter. Very talkative. A uh, Durfel. Durfel is a very old friend of mine. I haven't heard from him in years, though. It's nice to finally get some news of him. Uh, Durfel sent me. Indeed. I can feel the power emanating from the items you bear. Give me a moment, and I will reconstruct the band. There you are. Take it, with my blessings. 
Okay, well, while I'm in here, I may as well give it a look-see, right? Also, I know that I got... the Dauntless Chaucies. I think I have the helmet as well. I think that's it. This place isn't super big, but there are chests to grab. I'm hoping that I get the Corthian chest piece. Or helmet. No, yeah, chest piece. Alright, I right, chill out for a second. Jade Totem. Composed of magically endowed stones, this totem is worn like a necklace and is often sought by wanderers or explorers. Gold and experience. That's really good for early game. Whoops. At this point, I mean, I'm over leveled for most of it. I mean, I'm up three quarters of the way to max level. I'm what? Halfway through the game? Ah. Actually, I probably wouldn't even say halfway yet. We still have a lot of quests to take care of here before we even go south to the to the tier of the desert, and then we have uh, the DLC and Clericon to deal with. So I guess only three more regions after this. We've done two, then one, two. Well, I guess no. There's. I'm assuming this is going to be very linear. We're just going to kind of blast through this. It doesn't look like it's going to be like these other regions with all the questing. So yeah, I would say after this one, three more regions. This is a DLC region, so it won't take as long to get through, I would think, uh, as compared to like Detir and Clericon. Then Alabastra, again, looks like it's going to be very straightforward. Nothing to write home about, at least. The Amrinthian Band. Alas, I would dearly love to dive into a lecture regarding this crown's rich and sordid history, but there is no time. You see, a man named Kurig Shasta has tracked you here. He and his band of mercenaries await outside, keen on shedding my blood. How do they find you? I have to confess, these labors you've done for me have been for a single cause. I have been waiting for the day when I could meet Kurig once again. I sent you on labors to arm myself for this fight. They followed you to me just as I hoped they would. And now I need your help to fight them off. Okay. Who is Keurig Shaster? He is the man who murdered my wife, Jera, when Matic's Dace had hired him to kill me. Keurig had wanted to take my life for a long time, and now he has more reason to. He wants the truth of Jera's death to die with me. Interesting. Let's go kill him. Excellent. I will proceed outside. You should shortly follow. They will undoubtedly be caught off guard, so mesmerized by my biting tongue. Together, we should be able to kill these fools. Farewell. Let's go out here and bust a flex on these guys. There is no reasoning with Kurig Shasta. 
We must kill him now. Oh, I like his armor. <sighs> Never mind. It always comes to blood. I really like his armor. Shasta had a contract out on my life the last 15 years. I'm glad the bastard's finally dead. I can finally begin to travel as I come upon my remaining days. Return to my home and you will find a secret door in the fireplace which leads to my treasure room. All of the treasure there now belongs to you. Oh, goody goody. He just walks off. Look at look at he travels, man. I wonder if I can talk to Maddox Dace. I'll remember where he... lives at. Nope, nope, nope. <sighs> Hellbane. One of the legendary blades belonging to Verani mercenary known as Three Swords. It is weathered and rusty with age. But it's the actual, um... God, that's like no damage. Looks really cool, though. Helm of the Coast. An ancient god gift and tribal heirloom of the early Verani settlers in the Feylands. I feel like I'm not finding enough purple gear. Might gear anyway. I find a lot of other purple gear, but not. But that looks pretty cool. I'm a little disappointed with my loot finding so far. Okay, well, this might be a good place to call the episode. We have a few quests to take care of still, so we're not ready to move on from Earth here yet. Um, how do I want to handle this? Yeah, all these quests are within this area. This is the only one that's going to take us elsewhere, it looks like. So we'll probably save this one for last before we head south to the tier. That one sent to tier. Uh, this one we can do next episode. This one we can do next episode. This one we can do next... Yeah. So we have, what, five? Five quests in this area to take care of. So, cool. I'm going to call it here. Off camera, I'm going to go take care of my inventory and cure this disease that I have. And we'll probably pick up with... Yeah, we'll do Bad Blood in the Orson first in the next one. And then we'll probably do Learning Curve, take care of all the side quests, then we'll focus on the faction quests after that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode.